Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to start a new topic of discussion, which is on filter design. Okay, so again, thank you so much for my viewer, for your suggestion and also feedback. Okay, I have decided to redo this video in order to better meet your needs. In this video, I'm going to firstly define what is actually a microwave filter and we are going to understand the role of microwave filter in RF and microwave system. So basically, this will be the objective of this discussion. This will be the part one series discussion on filter design. So guys, if you're keen to know more about filter design, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me your question through the comment. Before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. Okay, when more you guys actually help to like this video, this video will have a better chances to reach out to a larger audience. So guys, help me press the like button now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. Let's quickly understand the definition of microwave filter. Okay, a microwave filter, okay, most of the time, it will be a passive electronics component that is actually designed to selectively pass or selectively reject specific frequency range within the microwave spectrum. Okay, it is used to control signal frequency in RF and also microwave system, ensure that only desired frequency are transmit or received while antenated the unwanted one. So in short, the filter actually has a role to play okay, in RF design. For example, any desired signal that you actually want to receive, it will allow it to pass. However, the rest of the signal, it will actually so-called reject the signal. So basically, this is the simple role of a filter. Coming to the key function of microwave filter, you can see that there are actually four key functions of microwave filter. The first and second, which I have just described. Okay, so basically, the role of microwave filter is to pass the desired frequency, and also to block or antenate away the unwanted frequency. So imagine this, okay, you have this FM receiver. Okay, in this FM receiver, you can actually receive all broadcasts in the FM band. For example, now, I just want to listen to one particular so-called radio broadcast. I do not want to receive the rest of the radio broadcast. So the filter actually select that particular broadcast that you actually want to listen and reject the rest of the broadcast. So from here, you can see that this is the role of a filter. They select the radio frequency that you actually want to listen while they reject the rest that you actually do not want to listen. And therefore, your receiver is actually tuned to the FM, your desired FM broadcast. That's how you actually able to hear the correct radio broadcast in your FM receiver. So this is one simple role of a microwave filter. Beside that, okay, so the microwave also help to improve the signal quality. Okay, so how they actually improve the sign signal quality is actually they reduce the out-of-band signal. Okay, so in short over here, you can imagine that the filter okay, can select a lot of, let's say, a lot of the rest of the signal. Okay, so when you actually can properly select the only desired signal, you actually will improve the signal quality as you can concentrate, okay, for example, your amplification, etc., on that particular frequency band. Okay, these two are resonant together. Okay, so because of this, you also will prevent the signal from distortion in the receiver and transmitter. Okay, so basically, this is a very simple definition of microwave filter. Let's take a close look. Okay, how does a filter actually works? Okay, imagine this is actually a filter. Okay, so over here, you can see that this is the input port. This is the output port. Like the definition mentioned, okay, for example, 
okay, this is the desired so-called frequency, then this desired frequency will be able to send from port 1 to port 2. Okay, so basically this is for the pass band. And for the stop band, for example, this is the undesired frequency that you do not want it to pass it to port 2. So basically the undesired frequency will not be able to pass to port 2. So in short, over here, you can see that the input port okay, basically has a range of frequency. And appearing at the port 2 will be just the desired frequency. The rest undesired frequency will be rejected by this filter here. Let me give you an example. Okay, so this is a band pass filter. For example, at the lower frequency, which is the stop band, which means that the signal okay, at the lower frequency, when they actually travel into the input port of the filter, they will not be able to appear at the output of the port 2. While at the pass band over here, the frequency range over here, okay, basically the signal again will be propagated over here. However, for this case here, they will allow it to be passed and appeared at port 2. So therefore, you actually will receive this particular pass band frequency at port 2. Same for the stop band over here, the higher frequency one. So basically, the higher frequency, okay, when they actually propagate in this filter over here, you can imagine that they will be stopped and will not be able to appear at port 2. So this is a very easy definition of filter. So now you probably will ask me, okay, how they can actually stop or how they can actually allow it to pass. Okay, so basically with this, okay, you need to understand the S parameters. Let me give you an example here. Okay, so this is what we call the incident wave. Okay, so basically when you allow it to be passed, it will be able to pass from port 1 all the way to port 2. So this is for the pass band. When you actually don't want it to be passed, what you need to do is you're going to have this, we call a refractor wave. Imagine this, this is the incident wave. For example, if it's allowed to pass, then it will be continued propagate and will appear at port 2. However, let's say at this frequency, okay, which I don't allow it to be passed. So instead of propagate, okay, so-called through the filter, it will refract from the filter and most of the energy will be lost. And basically from here, you can imagine that the signal over here, most of the time will be actually refracted back. Very minimum will be able to come out at the port 2. So basically with this, you can see that this is actually how a filter works. So when at the stop band here, okay, basically all of them, majority will be refracted back. While at this pass band, majority will be able to propagate from port 1 to port 2. And again from this stop band here, majority will be refracted back. How can we actually do this? Okay, so basically, you if you still remember the transmission line theory here, so let's say we have a perfect match here, basically most of the power will be able to transmit from the source to the load. So again, imagine okay, when we actually look into the impedance over here, for the pass band, they will be so-called almost equal, and majority of the signal will be able to propagate through the so-called filter and reach at the port 2. However, if we have some form of mismatch, there will be a return loss. So once you have a return loss, you actually has a so-called acute percentage of so-called signal will be reflected back. So basically, this is how the filter actually works. The desired band, okay, for the past band, then I have minimum reflected loss and I have majority transmission over to the port 2. While at the stop band, I will going to have a majority at the reflection wave and very minimum of incident wave will be able to propagate to port 2. Okay, so basically this is how a microwave actually works. Okay, so most of the time, okay, a simple microwave filter will be the LC. Okay, so from here you can see that this is a very simple LC. So when I actually look into this port here, okay, for example, okay, if I want it to be able to pass, then when I actually look it over here, it will be a low impedance and most of the energy will be able to propagate to port 2. When I don't want to allow it to be passed, when I actually look into the impedance over here, I actually create a very high impedance. Then most of the load will not be able to pass from port 1 to port 2. Majority will be refactored back. Okay, so basically this is a very easy definition of microwave filter. Okay, so before I continue guys, I urge you if you had learned something earlier on okay please help me to like this video and subscribe to this channel okay once again thank you so much for song support let me continue 
Okay, so there are actually four types of filter. Okay, earlier on, I have mentioned about band pass filter. We also have low pass filter, high pass filter, band stop or band reject filter. Okay, so these are the four types of filter. Okay, I will go a little bit more detail on all these four types of filters. Okay, the first one, which is the low pass filter. Okay, why this is called a low pass filter? You can see that this is actually the S21 of a filter. You can see that the low frequency is actually allowed to pass. So therefore, this is what we call a low frequency pass filter if you want. Okay, so all the low frequency will be able to pass while all the high frequency will not allow to pass. So this is a definition of low pass filter. Low pass filter actually allow the low frequency signal okay, without any intonation if possible okay, or any form of decrease in power, okay, but it reject any high frequency signal. So basically, this is the definition of low pass filter. High pass filter is actually almost the same with the low pass filter. For this case here, they actually only allow the high frequency signal to pass okay, without any antenna in its amplitude and block any low frequency signal. So this is what we call the high pass filter. From here, you can see that the pass band is actually at the high frequency and the stop band is actually at the low frequency, which means that low frequency, I will not be able to pass while at the high frequency, most of the signal will be able to pass. So this is what we define as high pass filter. Next will be band pass filter. By the name implied, which means that they actually just allow a very specific band of frequency to pass and they will block the rest of the other frequency. Okay, most of the time will be the lower or higher. Okay, so in short over here, I just need to specify the band that actually I allow to pass while the lower and the upper side of this so-called pass band, they will be rejected. So this is the definition of band pass filter. As for the name implied for this band stop or band reject, okay, basically it's the reverse process of band pass filter. Okay, whatever band that I actually specified, this band will be rejected, which means that the signal that is actually at this band will be antenna away. Okay, so the rest of them will be able to pass. Okay, so basically this type of filter actually antenna the signal whose frequency lie in a fixed band of frequency. So basically you can see that all this part here, the signal will not be able to pass while the rest okay, will allow to pass. So basically, these are the four types of filter. Low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter, band stop or band reject filter. Okay, so basically, this is what we call the idea. Okay, early on, you actually see the non-idea. So basically, this is a practical so-called uh, filter okay, which that they will have a so-called uh, transition okay, between the pass band and stop band. Okay, so basically, you can see that there will be a transition period. Okay, but for ideal, there is no transition period. So basically, this is the ideal low pass filter. You can see that just this band will be allowed to pass. All this band will be so-called rejected at an instant time. Okay, so this is the ideal low pass filter. Same for ideal high pass, band pass, and band stop filter. Okay, I think this is what we want to achieve when we actually design the microwave filter in order to have the ideal situation. But in the real practical world, okay, so this part cannot be instantly. There will be a transition period that we actually can shift from pass band to stop band. Okay, so basically, this is what we call the ideal world. But I think this ideal filter will let us understand better. Okay, so let me do a so-called uh, example in order to understand these four types of filter. Okay, so the diagram below actually shows the response of four filter. Okay, so this is the low pass filter, this is a high pass filter, this is a band pass filter, and this is a band stop or band reject filter. Okay, so basically this is what I mean here. So I have state the type of filter based. How I know this is low pass because I can see that the low frequency can pass. This is the low. Uh, sorry, the high frequency can pass. So I know that this is high pass filter. The low frequency can pass, so I know that this is a low pass filter. Over here, you can see that a specific band can actually pass, so I know that this is what we call the band pass filter. Over here, you can see that this specific band will not be allowed to pass, so I know that this is a band stop filter. Okay, so basically, I have done the item number 1A, okay, state the type of filter, and I have also explained why they are low pass, high pass, band pass, or band stop filter here. Coming to the session B, a signal actually consists of four frequency components. So basically, I have a 
four frequency component at the input, okay, which is 10K, 20K, 30K, and 40K that is actually fed into the filter. Okay, state the frequency component that will appear at the filter output. Okay, so if you still remember earlier on, I have mentioned about the filter input and output. If you still remember, okay, so the input and output. Okay, so basically the question says that after they appear at the so-called input, after they go through the filter, what will be appearing at the output? Okay, so let me come into more discussion on this question here. So this is the signal that will be at the input. I have 10 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz, and also 40 kilohertz. When this signal is passed through a low pass filter, okay, which is the cutoff frequency at 25. Okay, which means I imagine this is actually over here and cut over here. Okay, which means that 10 and 20 will be able to pass, 30 and 40 will be rejected, as you can see from this diagram here, which means that only 10 and 20 will be able to pass, 30 and 40 will be rejected. So therefore, at the output of the filter will be just simply 10 and 20, while I have successfully removed away 30 and 40 kilohertz here. So this is what we call the low pass filter. Next, Okay, which is on the high pass filter. Again, the same signal at the input of the filter. So these are the four signal that actually appear at the input of the filter. They actually went through this high pass filter, which has a cutoff frequency at 15. So at 15, which means that this is the signal here, which means that at 15, I cut off. Then I actually has successfully removed away this 10 kilohertz signal. And what appeared at the output of the filter will be 20 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz, and 40 kilohertz. So basically, this is a high pass filter. As you can see that only the higher frequency will be able to pass, while the 10 kilohertz, which is the low frequency, is actually antenna away or removed away by the filter. So this is what we know as the high pass filter. Next, we come into the band pass filter, which I have illustrated earlier on. So again, these are the signals that appear at the input of the band pass filter. Okay, so the band I actually specified to pass is actually 15 to 25. Okay, so if you plot all this into one diagram, you can see that I purposely actually select just the 20 kilohertz, while the rest will be removed, which means that 10, 30, 40 will be removed. Only 20 will be appear at the output of a filter. So therefore, I actually select this 20 kilohertz signal to pass. The rest I actually remove. Just I illustrate on the FM broadcast. I just want to select this specific so-called radio broadcast. The rest I will be removed and I will be able to so-called decode this message and listen to my music. So basically, this is a band pass filter. Coming into the last one, okay, which is the band reject filter or band stop filter here. Okay, so over here, you can see that this is the particular range that I actually want to reject. Okay, so basically from 15 to 25. So from here, okay, again, if I brought these two diagram into one, okay, you can clearly see that I actually just want to reject the 20 kilohertz. So what will be appearing at the output, okay, will be just 10, 30, and 40 kilohertz. How I have successfully removed away this 20 kilohertz here. So basically, this is what I want to discuss on the type of filter. From here, you can see that I mainly have four types of filter, okay, which is the low pass filter, band pass filter, and also the band stop filter. Coming to my last slide for this discussion, okay, so on my following video discussion here, I will discuss the key parameters of filter design. The first portion, which is the type of filter, which I have just illustrated, the low pass, high pass, band pass, and also band stop filter. On my part two series discussion, I will discuss all these so-called key parameters okay, that we need to know or understand when we actually describe a filter design. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you so much for your support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.